Hi, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hope that you are all doing good. Um, this morning, I was just, as I was coming in, um, I feel like the Lord just was filling my heart with just thanksgiving and um, just to be honored that we get to be in the room and thinking about how the Lord comes here every single Sunday, like anytime we gather, anytime we go to meet with him, like Jesus, he's so faithful to show up every single time. And I was reading in Psalms 100, um, and it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with singing, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. So just today, I would love if you guys could just close your eyes and just meditate on his goodness, on his faithfulness. Jesus, we just thank you, God, for how wonderful you are, Lord. Lord, we never want to treat this as common, God. Thank you, God, for how you pour yourself out, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you would receive all glory and honor today, Lord. We set aside all distractions, all other things, Lord, and we gaze at your beauty. I just pray that you would be welcome, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. Thank you, God.
shadows can't deny in your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high in your name cannot be overcome in your name is the light that the shadows can't deny in your name cannot be
Jesus, Jesus. 
feel like we're supposed to stay there for a moment. Just the voices again, no instruments. just the church. Again, sing it again. Thank you, Jesus. Do it one more time. Thank you, Jesus. you Holy Spirit we welcome you into this room Jesus we welcome you in our hearts Jesus be loved today Lord Jesus be honored today Lord Jesus we say come Lord Jesus come that's the cry of our hearts thank you Jesus you stick closer than a brother Jesus you are our best friend we welcome you. Can I get my Bible real quick? Um, I, while we're still standing, I felt that there was some people in this room that are dealing with a broken heart. And I want to pray for you real quick. And I wanted to read this scripture over you. Psalm 34, 18. It said, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. So I'm not sure if there's anyone in here that's dealing with a crushed spirit or a broken heart, but the Lord wants to heal you today. If that's you, we're all family. Can you just wave your hand? And I want the people close to you just to, if you're comfortable, to, to lay hands on you and pray over you. I see some here and some in the back. Yeah, if, you, if you're dealing with a crushed spirit like we just read about, if you're dealing with a broken heart, I feel that the Lord wants to just free you today from that. So if you see someone with a hand up, just gather around them right now. Come on, we are church family, and when two or three agree in his name, it's done. So I believe with all of my heart that no one that has a broken heart has to leave today with a broken heart. So Lord, we just thank you. 
Come on, church, agree with me. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that your word says that you are close to the brokenhearted, Lord. Lord, you heal us of a broken heart, Lord. You give us peace, Lord, for our worry, Lord. So I thank you right now, God, that every single person in this room, every person watching online, God, I thank you right now that you're healing their heart in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that you're healing them from betrayal, Lord, that you're healing them from worry, Jesus, from doubt. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are mending up their broken heart. Lord, peace, peace you give unto them in Jesus' name, Lord. You give your beloved rest and peace, Lord. So I thank you that the heaviness, Lord, that has weighed them down will be lifted right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we command it to go right now. Every worry, every stress, every bit of anxiety, we command you to go in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. Right now, Holy Spirit, I thank you that they're going to feel your touch, Lord. They're going to know your nearness right now in Jesus' name. I feel like even people, as we've been praying, you feel like a weight has been lifted off of you. A heaviness has been lifted off of you. That's Jesus. He comes to heal the broken heart and bind up their wounds. You don't have to live that way anymore. So, Lord, I just thank you, God, that it's done right now in the name of Jesus. I really feel like some of you are going to feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders because it's his burden to carry. As I always share this, the, the Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. That's literally throwing your issues to Jesus. It's his to take. He took it on the cross already. So now you just have to hand it over to him. It's not your burden to carry. It never was. So give it to Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us do that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We know what to do, right? We seal that with what? Praise. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let our worship team know they're having a great time back there. Let them know you love them. I can get my iPad as well. All right, you guys can sit down. Carla just told me my earrings are hitting my mic. You know, I typically wear the big hoops, and I thought, well, I'm preaching today, I'll wear my small hoops, but even whatever. No earrings for J Dog today. All right, all right, all right. So um, a couple things before we get into it. As you've noticed, we have our wonderful children here today from Jesus Kids. We love you guys. Yeah, can we just stand up and honor them? They're amazing. We love you. You guys are wonderful. Before I um, dismiss them, I, we wanted, you know, we just had our first VBS, and I don't know how many of your kids were in it. My daughter was there. She came home and said, Mom, I had my first encounter with Jesus there. And I think it's just so amazing because it's, it's the ways of the Lord amaze me every day. I love that how she had her first encounter away from her parents at VBS with our amazing team ministering the gospel. And I've seen what a change it's had in my own child's life. And by the way, youth group is coming soon. Okay. <laughs> We'll have more about that very soon, but we will be doing it in the very near future because we want my, I want my boys in there. I want them to get rocked. We want our children on fire for Jesus. And as we're seeing, the Lord is really marking our children here at Jesus Kids. And what God is doing is amazing. I wanted to show you guys the recap video, and then I want to have some of our team uh, come up and just share a little bit of what the Lord did. So we can show that video real quick.
Uh, Scott was just telling me that families actually flew in just to have their kids be a part of VBS, which is just wonderful. We're going to do more and more things for the children. Hey, I grew up, I'm a PK, like camp, lock-ins, all that stuff. When we have our building, whew, it's going to be amazing. And that's getting so much closer. A lot of answered prayers lately, so um, good news to come very soon. Okay, can I have the Kaylee and Esther and maybe Mackenzie just come up? We just want to hear from you guys what the Lord has done. Uh, before I'll have Esther start, before I actually I'll have Kaylee start. Before I get into that, if you served with the children um, this week, can you just stand up? So, hey, Keith Wheeler, how are you? Keith carries the cross all around. Can you stand up real quick, just so we can honor you? He carries the cross all around the world. The man of God. We love you, Keith. I didn't know you were coming today. Welcome. We love you. I love church. You always have people just popping in, and I just love it. Tonight, amazing um, couple who's worships is just, they're like, we're in town on vacation. Can we just stop by tonight? We just want to come support. And I'm like, yeah, okay. It's just, it's when the Holy Spirit's moving, people just want to be in the presence of the Lord. There's just nothing like it. But um, can our team stand up if you served or helped with the kids in any way? Can you please stand up? Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. They served and just, uh, Nico was Jesus. He played Jesus in a play, and you did, you made, I said, Jesus looks good on you, Nico. He, but they, they served so beautifully, and we just thank you. Our, I mean, like I said, I speak from my own child. Our, their lives are being changed in, in Jesus' kids, and we're really thankful, and that's because the people that serve, they really love Jesus. So, yeah, I would love to just hear from you. What, what did the Lord do this week? Yeah, well, obviously we had a lot of fun and joy was everywhere. Um, but what I really want to share with you guys is these kids came hungry for Jesus. Yeah. So it was easy. I feel like our whole team felt the same way as when, when it was time to be serious and listen to the lesson. And when it was time to receive from the Lord, they came hungry. And you saw in the photo or in the video that they came and they were still at the altar. And they were just ready to receive him in their, their pure faith. I mean, you tell them the word and they believe you. Yeah. So I learned from them because I want to come to him like a child like that. And so honestly, it was just a joy and an honor to serve them, to be with the team. And our team truly is amazing. So I just thank you very much. Mm. These kids are guys. awesome. You guys are doing an amazing job as parents. And I'm excited to hear all the testimonies. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I love you. I heard your daughter gave her life to Jesus. Yeah, I think um, like 40 kids or so, over 40, gave their lives yeah. to Jesus, which is just, this is why we do what we do. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'd love to hear just a little bit from you. And Esther, you're amazing. I, I just love you. She preached the gospel in such a beautiful way to the children. And that's not easy, because kids don't lie. If it's not good, they don't fake it like it is. And you preach the gospel. I know you one day, and Ryan came in another day, and it's just so proud of you guys. You guys are just amazing. I'd love to hear. Yeah, tell me what yeah. God did. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, we had the first day, we had 45 kids um, respond to give their lives to the Lord. And every day, we had around 40 to 50 kids every single day respond to an altar call. We got to see so many lives touched. And I just want to thank Michael and Jessica because I really feel like you guys made way for this. Without you guys, this would not have been possible. And I just feel like the Lord's been looking for those to entrust his presence with, to touch this next generation. And every time we just made way for worship or any moment, like the Lord would instantly come because he's been waiting. Mm -hmm. He's been waiting to yes. entrust himself to a people. Yes. And I just want to honor you guys and say thank you. Thank you for uh, pouring yourselves into this next next generation into this church and also thank you to the parents you guys thank you for 
pouring into your kids. Thank you so much for every seed that you sow in prayer. And I told our team, I was like, yes, we get to see the fruit of this, but this is because of the parents' prayers. It's because of the way that you guys love on your kids. I know some aunts and grandmas, you guys brought your kids. So I wanna say thank you because you guys made way for this. You made way for your kids' encounters and we got to partner with you guys. But I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because it was so beautiful to watch as the Lord poured himself out. But again, it's all because of you guys and those who prayed with us and partnered with us. It was just one of the most, I will never forget it. And I don't think I can even put it into words. Um, it was truly marking. Beautiful. Thank you, Esther. You made Carla cry, as always. No, just, just to echo everything that they said, like, these kids came in so hungry. And I got to be with like the older kids and I'm like, oh man, like these are really cool kids. And they came in so hungry and we had them write down prayer requests and they all took it so seriously. Like one of the boys, his prayer request was to be refilled with the Lord. And then another one was to know his name, that he just wanted to know his name. And they, like two of them were walking after we did a craft with like, it, they had Jesus like outside of the tomb and the, the stone was rolled away and two of the boys were walking and just, they were like, can you imagine what it would be like to have nails in your hands and nails in your feet and just talking about the suffering of Christ. Yeah. And like to be able to comprehend that at such a young age and like that they so like know how worthy and how holy he is. And another boy that he went forward and he's, he gives his life to the Lord and then afterwards he's like, but I hear Pastor Michael talk about the steps and I have to get baptized. Wow. <laughs> and like, even that, like that's just so oh. beautiful. And it's like, you'll get baptized, buddy. Like, he's like, I have to do all the steps. Wow. They're so hungry. I love that. I love it. And may the Lord intensify this. You know, um, we are to be like little children. So we have a lot to learn from them. And, um, and then I'll just close and I'll let the kids get back. Sophia, I said, we're gonna, you guys are going to come into big church and sing with us today. She's like, Ugh, really? I like our worship way better. And I'm like, sorry, little girl. Every now and then we'll do that. It's nice to have them in here worshiping with us. But they love their worship team in the kids' church. So they love you guys. But um, it's so vital. I remember when my children went to schools here that, you know, they were Christian schools, but they were not open to the move of the Spirit, some of them, or none of them really, until we went to Bethel. And I remember when we went and had that season in Reading, and my kids could be around other children that believed in healing, believed in the power of the Holy Spirit. I remember, I think it was our middle son, Benny, he was like, oh, there's other kids that are like us, Mom. And I'm like, he didn't feel... He never, he was always bold. Like he would always preach the gospel to anyone that didn't believe in the gospel. So that was no issue for them, for that one, I should say, for him. But I remember it was so beautiful that my kids had other children around them that made them feel like, man, we're not alone in this and, and we need each other. And that's why I think it's so beautiful what God is doing with our children because he's going to use them. He's going to give them the visions and the dreams and they'll prophesy like the word says. And so we just honor you guys and, and your hearts. And we thank you deeply for just the sacrifice you have all put in um, to the kids. And we love you. And with that, I will let you kids go back and have fun in kids church. We love you so much. So great. So it's going to be noisy for a minute. It's okay. They're great. There you go. Buddy up. <laughs> Love you guys. And they're the best. Chris and Dorothy, did you see your boy when he was walking in? He was looking for you. He was looking like that. It was so cute. Aww. 
guys. Okay, so um, I do have a couple announcements. Real quick, can we show the video of Michael? He doesn't stay away from you guys, so he made a video. Hey, good morning, guys. Michael here. I am actually in Columbus, Ohio, and I am missing this Sunday morning. This is the first Sunday morning that I have missed since we started, and I just wanted to come to you and let you know how much I love you guys and let and also let you know that uh, this will not be happening very often. I had given my word to preach for a young uh, up and coming church that is walking by faith and really wanting the Lord to come and be their everything. And uh, so over the last couple of years, I've had to postpone uh, just because of schedule conflicts and and then COVID hit. And I really felt like uh, it was the best example and uh, would be the most integrous thing to, to come, even though I've cut my travel so, uh, so much over the last uh, few months and into the future. But I want you to know I love you so much and I'm sorry I miss you guys already. Uh, Jesus Image is my favorite place to preach and in my opinion, the greatest place uh, in the world to minister. So I love you guys. Have an amazing, amazing day. Jessica is going to minister to you. You are in great hands, so open your hearts and, uh, and allow the Lord to touch you. Love you so much and I will see you very soon. Have an amazing day in God's presence. Aww. He really, oh, all the students, we love you, Michael. We're standing for you. The mic loves you, too. A um, couple announcements real quick. So because we are renting a hotel, as you guys know, next week is another week where we will be back at the Celeste Hotel only for Sunday morning. Sunday night stays the same. So if everyone that's here get that information. That will be on our website, jesusimage.tv as well. Again, only for next Sunday morning. We will be back here the following Sunday morning, okay? We did this once before. Oh, Lord, thank you for our new building soon. But a lot of you guys loved that hotel and loved being down by UCF, and it's a wonderful place to go share the gospel and the love of Jesus with all those students. So, um, but again, next week at the Celeste Hotel for Sunday morning only, not Sunday night. We will be always at Judah for now for Sunday night where we always meet. Okay, a couple other quick announcements. Jesus School is coming, okay? It's coming. We are excited so much for Jesus School. Um, if you are feeling called to come and lay down everything for I see John Richards in the back there like... I love you, John. He came to Jesus School, and it really, there is nothing like it. I'm biased, of course, but I'm, I promise you that. Everyone that comes through, just seasoned apostles and, and, and mothers and fathers, they always say there's something about these students here. There's something about Jesus School. They actually ask to come be, just to come be in the room many times. So God has truly marked Jesus School. If you are thinking about coming, there is still time to apply. All the info is there. We would love to have you. If you are international students, we are so close to being able to have you come in person. It's a whole process. You have to be CVIS certified to do that. We are so close, but if you want to do Jesus School online or if you can't come to Orlando, that is a great option. But I feel like when those international students come here to Jesus School, <laughs> I feel like the fire is just going to, oh, I mean, get ready. I can't wait for that day. And we are working very hard to make that happen. Also, Bethany is going to be our worship school, which we're so excited about that. Um, that Dom, our amazing Dom, is going to lead that. And Amy, our dancer, is helping admin it and just run all the back-end stuff. And 
as you see here, it's going to be for vocals. If you want, if you play an instrument, if you dance, if you if you dance, if you're a decent dancer, I'm joking. Um, songwriting, okay, that was mean, Jess. Songwriting, spoken word, I'm really excited about that one. Videography and photography. I know Michael spoke into that a little bit last time, but people from all over the world are asking us, how have you trained your media team? And as Michael has said before, this the Holy Spirit that trains them and teaches them. They'll 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 hear something. They will always pray before our team, our worship team, we're always praying before service. They'll hear something and the Lord will tell them, this is where I'm about to move in the room and they'll have their cameras ready. So there's one thing to have what God is doing in the room. We all feel it corporately, but it takes a gifting to, to send that over the airways where people that are watching online are actually getting touched as well. So we are going to train people to how to capture these moments so that people will be blessed all over the world. So if that's something that you're thinking about, we'd love to have you at Bethany. You have to be a Jesus School student. We feel like that's really important. We need to know the people that we are training up in worship. Um, just some of the people, like Steph is coming in to, to, to minister and, and help give language to worship. My dad is going to come in and teach us how to worship corporately, which I'm, I'm just excited about. I'm going to be in that class for sure. So, um, but just keep it in prayer as our church family. I'm believing that amazing worshipers with Levitical hearts will come and trans, just come to Orlando to minister to the Lord because that's above everything, right? Okay, I'm done with my announcements, I think. Uh, Ryan, if you could come up, it's offering time. You guys ready to give? Yes. Amen. If you guys want to turn, yeah, she's ready. If you guys want to turn to Matthew chapter 6, well, I'm going I'm to read verse 24. So this is the time that we give our tithes and our offerings. You know, this is the storehouse that God, if you, if you feel that God has called you to Jesus' image, to what God is doing here, this is a storehouse in which we bring our tithes and our offerings. There's a common thread throughout scripture that talks about tithes. You can see it pre-law, in the law, and post-law. It's all throughout scripture on giving the tithes and, the, um, and our offerings. But uh, in Matthew chapter 6, it says, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. And then right after that, Jesus says, these are the red letters, he says, that is why I tell you, do not worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? So look at the birds in the sky. Don't plant or harvest or they store food in their barns for your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you more valuable to them than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? This is a moment that Jesus is teaching us of this beautiful stewardship of finances. And, you know, right here in Scripture, it says one is governing your life. One of them, it's either finances or it's the Lord. How many of you guys know that our bank account, whether it's there's a lot of money or a little bit in there, doesn't determine our mood? You know, in, in Scripture right here, sometimes I've found this out, me and my wife growing in stewardship of finances, that that. My trust is in the Lord, you know, that my bank account doesn't determine how I feel throughout the day, whether I'm happy or whether I'm sad. That isn't the barometer of how I'm doing because my contentment is found in the Lord. In fact, Paul writes about that in Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 11. He says, I found whether I have plenty or I have a little bit, I found how to be content because it's found in the Lord. And so I'm as good as he is and he is good. I'm not as good throughout the day as my bank account, as my wallet, as, you know, that's not deterrent. That doesn't, that doesn't lead me. That doesn't guide me because scripture says, Jesus says, you're governed by one of them, one or the two. And so my encouragement to us today is, man, let us, we serve a God, a good God, like Michael taught us last week. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the earth and the fullness thereof. That's where our trust is. That's where our contentment is. In the process of God growing us in stewardship of finances, let's be content. Let worry not hit our minds when it comes to finances because it is found in the Lord. 
because there's so much stuff throughout the day and throughout life and bills and finances. When we open that little book up and we realize everything that is owed and due, that can determine whether we worry in a moment or not. Or my trust is found in you, Lord. It's not found in what's in front of me. It is found in you. And you're a good God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from him. So I'm going to pray. We're going to bring up the buckets in a moment. If you guys need envelopes, you guys can slip up your hand. We have ushers throughout the building that could give you guys an envelope. So if you, want, if you need one, there's a few in here. We could give you guys envelopes. We're going to bring the buckets up. I'm going to pray over the offering real quick. You guys could text to give. It is on your screen. We have text to give right here in the building as well as online. You guys, uh, the number that's online, you can text to give that number that is on there. And I'm going to pray over the offering. Lord, we thank you. Jesus, thank you, Lord, that worry is not our portion. You are. It's you, Jesus. Lord, you know every circumstance in this place and in this building. You know every financial need. Father, let our trust be found in you and you alone. You're a good father that gives good gifts to his children. Father, we thank you, God. I pray bless every family every business, every home, every student, every church member, everybody watching online, abundantly, above all they can ask, think, or imagine. We love you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We're going to be right back. You guys could come up and give into the bucket.
when school starts, it'll be back. And the choir, we're going to have the choir all the time. We're actually trying to figure out a way to get them on the road with us when we go out for Jesus night. So it's just so exciting. That's like when we go to churches, they always go, are you going to have your choir? We're like, well, we're working on that. So um, real quick, let's just start in prayer. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Oh, Jesus, I just ask that you will touch your people today. Holy Spirit, give me the words to say. This is your meeting. This is your message. We welcome you right now. Move and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Um, thank you, Joel. I think I'm okay, but stay close because you know me. I'll probably look over at you at some point very soon. Um, just wanted to update you guys as well. I know Michael told you about my mom, and many of you have been DMing me and writing me and asking uh, my mom. Um, if you don't know, recently she went into the doctor because she was um, not feeling well and things like that. So she got an MRI, and when she went in, they found um, five tumors in her brain, which obviously is, you know, never what you want to hear. But we really believed that they would, would not be cancerous. So she went back again, and they said they're not cancerous. So that's a huge answer to prayer. So thank you, Jesus, for that. And um, we got some more appointments tomorrow that I'm going to go with her. But the neurologist is actually saying they don't even think she'll need surgery. They're, they're going to monitor them and keep an eye on it. But... They said they don't feel like she needs surgery. So these are huge answers to prayer. So thank you so much for praying. God is a healer. He still heals. And we stand on his word. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, not, not ever a good thing when these trials come, but it really tests your faith. And it was, you know, you have those moments in your life where you go, either I believe the word of God or I don't. Either, either I believe that Jesus is her healer or our healer, or I don't. So we were faced with either we're going to stand on the word of God. Um, we had to fight not to let fear come in and all those things that try to creep in when you deal with something like this. And God will have the victory and he is faithful. So I just wanted to thank you guys so much for your prayers. Mom's going to be okay. And I'm just praying that those tumors will shrivel up and die in Jesus' name. So... And now I just want to go after healing more than ever before, honestly. It just makes me want to go after healing even more. So, and that's what we're going to do here at this church. Amen? Okay. So I want to talk to you today. Uh, my message is about being a Mary. <laughs> go figure, right? Okay. But it's something that we're all called into. I think something that at times we get confused about is we think that if we're called to be someone who lavishly loves Jesus and gives him everything, then we're not called to preach the gospel or we're not called to do other things. But all of us need to have lavish love for Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're an evangelist and you preach the biggest crusades in the world, if you're a pastor, if you are someone who is a mom that stays at home with your children, and that's your ministry, because that is a ministry as well. Let me just say that. That is not a less than calling. That is such a beautiful ministry unto the Lord. But we are all called to be lovers of Jesus. And one thing that we feel called to here at Jesus Image, it's something we pour into our students from day one, is we have to love the Lord our God with all we have. That's where we find everything, and I am living proof that nothing else satisfies but that. I promise you that. I've seen it all. I've been on all the platforms in the world. I went with my dad to India where 7.3 million people came in attendance after three days. To this day, I could be wrong, but that was the record, the highest of all time of people that have ever come to a meeting about Jesus. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. Michael was there. We were newly wed, I think, at the time, or engaged or something like that. But I remember we drove on a golf cart just to see, just to see what that amount of people would look like. And we couldn't see past the horizon. We couldn't even get through the crowd. It was... I've never seen anything like that, but I'm here to say even that won't satisfy your soul. You don't leave saying, I've seen so many people give their life to Jesus, so now that's it. No, that's not what it's all about. That is something you get 
from falling in love with Jesus. That is something that happens when someone has devoted their life to Jesus. There is a greater calling and a greater price than that, and it is loving the Lord your God with everything in you. So let's get into the scripture. Let's go to Luke 7, 36. I'm going to skip around a bit, so I'm going to read 36 through 39 then 44 through 48 and verse 50, and I will be reading out of the New Living Translation. So again, Luke 7, I'm going to start at verse 36. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him, so Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, when the Pharisee that had invited, who invited Jesus saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She is a sinner. See, Jesus doesn't look at us the way people do. He loves us unconditionally, and he so loves to be loved by his children. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. Listen to this talk. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss. But from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. A couple things I want to just hit on there. He took her lavish heart of worship and love for him as an act of faith. Think of that for a moment. That was looked at as faith. Jesus walked into the house of a Pharisee, someone that was probably respected and esteemed in his area, they did not understand that the king of kings was in their home. They, that, I always say this. I say it to our team all the time. We cannot treat what God is doing as common. We cannot treat being awakened in the night by Jesus to come pray as just a common thing. This is an invitation from the king of kings. It is an honor and a joy. And so here's Jesus. He's in this home. He's not valued as he should be. And here is this woman, a sinner with many sins. Society would have looked down today even at a woman like this. And she gave Jesus her everything. That's what I feel deeply that we are being called into as a church, as a people to give the Lord our everything, give him our love, give him our worship. It doesn't matter if you feel too much for people. Who cares what people think? Can I say that again? Who cares what people think? It's, it's costly to love the Lord this way. I love what Jeremy Riddle once said when, he, when we brought him in on Zoom, when Michael and him were talking about purity of worship. He said, we all love Stephanie. As you know, Stephanie's like, she just should move here. She's like a family member. We love her so much. And he said, we all love her now, but what many people don't realize when before she became known as she is now, it was very costly for her to pour out her worship on Jesus like she does. She was misunderstood. Not everyone understood her zealous love as worship. There's people that we all love and respect now and we talk about. You don't know the cost that they paid. You don't know how they poured out their love to Jesus. And at the time, it was very misunderstood and by many still today. So it will cost you something, but it's so worth it to love Jesus. It's so, so worth it. I was talking with someone not too long ago, and they have been coming around our church a lot. They feel just called. They said something I just feel like we're supposed to be around. So they've been showing up, and they said to me, they said, we're, we're sorry to tell you this, but we really thought you were too 
much for a while. We completely disagreed with the way you guys did church. We thought you worshiped too long. We thought that you guys cried too much when you talked about Jesus. We just, it was too much. It was almost everything that we've been trained not to do. Like I had a girl DM me the other day. Don't DM me all the time. I'm talking about DMs. I try to read as much as I can, but I can't always read all of them. And please don't send me mean DMs. I will block you. Um, but... <laughs> I got DM'd from a girl recently, and she goes, I love your worship leader. It's so amazing to me to watch that her back is towards the audience. We, I'm a worship leader at my church, and I'm trained to never do that. What is this? And I thought, this is beautiful. It's a different, it's, it's, it shouldn't be different. This should be how, I, I wish every church was like this. But it's, it's costly, and you will be misunderstood, just like, just like we believe this is Mary. The Bible doesn't say for sure that it's Mary, but many theologians and people believe that this was Mary. But this woman who came and gave her all to Jesus, she was ridiculed. She, we're going to get into this in a moment. Judas, shortly after this happened, went and betrayed Jesus. See, your lavish love for Jesus will expand the dry hearts of others. It will, it will, it will, it will, okay. It will. You will be mocked. You will be talked about. You will be misunderstood. You will, people will come out of the woodworks to throw their judgment and accusation on you when you give Jesus your everything. There is something to say. Why, why did this get Judas? Remember, he goes, that money could have been given to the poor. What's this? It's too much. And then he went and betrayed Jesus. But she knew what she was doing. She knew in that moment that Jesus was about to betray un- unto death. No one has been betrayed like that. Can we all say that? That I don't know anyone in this room that has been betrayed to the point of death. We've all walked through betrayal, but no one has gone through what Jesus went through. And this woman gave her everything to Jesus. And I want to lovingly provoke you. And it provokes me just to who cares? I was telling the people, our, our team, not the people, our worship team, the people, the worship team in the back, I was saying how often when we go out and minister in other places, how it's not always the response that we get here at home. It's sometimes I just get blank stares by people when I'm crying. I remember one time I preached at one of our conferences and Theo was little and he goes, some lady walked out when you were preaching and was like, she's too much for me. My gosh, that girl cries too much and left. That's okay because I don't do it for them. I do it unto the Lord, right? Like, and that's how we all have to be. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, what, the only thing that matters is our love for Jesus, that he feels loved and welcomed here. That the Holy Spirit, who is a person with a personality, I say this all the time, it's not a feeling, it's not an endorsement at the end of a service, it's not a mist, even though he can transform as a mist, but he is a person with feelings. We can grieve him, as the Bible tells us, with a personality, and we want to make sure he always knows that he's welcome here, correct? Our schedule, our programs, which we don't have, thank God for that, but all those things don't even come close to having him being welcome in the room. Even the visitor, as much as I'm so glad you guys come and visit, Jesus is above the visitor. (laughs) Jesus is above our sermons. Jesus is above the worship. As I told the worship team, I'm like, it doesn't matter the reaction of the audience. What matters is, did you minister to the Lord? Did you let him feel loved? Did we welcome the Holy Spirit? Is he all in all? Even if the crowd doesn't respond, even if the live stream goes away and all the people go away, if it was just us in the room, would the Lord feel loved and valued here? If it's yes, then that's what we're doing something right. That's the goal here is to let Jesus be loved above all. Okay, let's go to Mark 14, 3. It says, meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard, she broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Again, this is another part in the Bible where we read about the alabaster jar. Many theologians believe it is the same 
a situation that happened just for reading about it in a different gospel. So this one says she broke it, the jar, and poured the perfume over his head. So think about that for a moment. We're going to get into this a little bit at the end. We read about how the feet were being washed and, and kissed with tears. Now the perfume is like almost every part of Jesus was saturated with this costly oil. When you pour something on the head, we know what happens. It drips down. It, it permeates you. The, just imagine just the smell. And like um, Lindy when Chase, when they came to Jesus School, Lindy Kofer and Chase, Chase said this. It wasn't me that said it, but he said, Imagine the smell. Jesus went to the cross shortly after that smell was still lingering on Jesus when he went to the cross. We, you have to imagine those oils, if you've been to the Middle East like I have, they are potent. They're real stuff. They're not the artificial fragrance that we wear. It's like it's potent. It lasts if someone puts in, essence or es, I can't even say that word, but it's okay. Um, essence, incense. There we are. Incense. Um, when someone puts that in a room, you walk, you first thing you do when you walk in the door, it permeates everything. So imagine that Jesus still possibly had this smell on his body when he was going to the cross. Think of how that must have touched the Lord to just think, I might be betrayed right now, but there was one that loved me with all of her heart. Yeah. Right? There was one. There was everyone left Jesus as we know this. John the beloved was still there. John was also the one, remember when Jesus was speaking of his betrayal, which that's another side I love about Jesus, that he loves us so much that he even brings us into his betrayal. Think about that, that he brought his disciples. I, I mean, I know how hard it is for us as a with, uh, that lead a team to even tell our team what's going on in our life sometime with betrayal. It's a very vulnerable thing because it's hurtful when you walk through that. Imagine Jesus as he's eating the Last Supper tells his team, I'm about to be betrayed. And remember, it was Peter that said, who, who is it? He went to John the Beloved. Who is it? There was something that John had. He had access to Jesus in a way that the other disciples did not. Why do I say that? Because he was the one that was able to ask Jesus, who will it be, Lord? And he told him who it was. So there's, and that's what I want for all of us. Like so many left him in the moment of the cross when he was going down with the palms and, and all the worship. Everyone wanted to be around him. Then when everyone was getting healed and, and Jesus was so welcomed. And then the moment that death comes, and the cross comes, only few were with him. And how that happens in real life, right? Has that ever happened to any of you? Okay, yeah, it's happened to me. I remember when my parents went through their divorce, people that called us every day and would come sit on the platform at Crusades wanted nothing to do with us, nothing to do with us. It was hurtful. It was painful. I remember how that felt, and I can only imagine how that felt for the Lord, all these people that he poured into and raised up and gave his everything to were not by him at the cross, but Mary was. John was, there was few that were, and that's what we want to be, no matter what the cost is of following Jesus, no matter what the price is, no matter what may come, giving him your yes and your all is good enough. We have to be people willing to die for Jesus. All right. So as we just read how she poured it, the perfume over his head, I looked up essence of nard. So it was a perfume that made your body relax. Think of that. She laid a perfume on his head that made your body relax. See, Mary knew. I don't know what she knew exactly, but there was something that she was willing to give him in that moment that nobody else was willing to give him. But she poured an oil over his body that made his body relax because that's what essence of nard did. It was an expensive perfume that could have paid a yearly wage, as we talk about, as the Bible says. It was the best of the best, and what Mary did was an act of lavish love. See, she didn't hold anything back on Jesus. She gave him everything she had. She didn't give him a partial part of her heart. She gave him all, and that's what Jesus is wanting from us today, to give him everything where we fully live for him, devoted, no distraction. Like Michael always says, it cannot be Jesus and. 
That is not, that, that mindset has to go. It just has to die because he's not, he's too holy to be an addition to something else in our life. He's too worthy to just be something that we fit into our schedule when we need him or we pray when things aren't going our way. But the moment we have a good day, we forget about Jesus. He's too worthy of our love for that. So look again in Mark, in verse 8, Mark 14, Jesus said, that she anointed his body for burial. I didn't read that, but that's a reference. You guys can unpack this on your own. I would encourage you to. Like we said, her, his body was anointed for burial. She was giving him her love before he was about to be betrayed unto death. Think about it for a moment. Think, do you not think that the Lord still hurts today? The Bible says that he changes not. That's what the word of God says. So for all the people that say, stop teaching on the suffering of Jesus, well, the Bible says that he changes not. Of course, there's so much more, and we talk about that, but Jesus still grieves when he's not loved. Jesus still grieves when people that are preachers leave the faith. Uh, this is happening at an alarming rate right now. I mean, I, I'm sure you guys have seen that. People are completely leaving the faith. Pastors and worship leaders are completely saying they don't even believe in God anymore. You don't think that that hurts the heart of Jesus? Of those, those are his children. Of Would it hurt you if your children left and said, I don't want anything to do with you anymore? Well, how much more love does Jesus have for us, his children? So he still grieves today, and we can minister to his heart when he does, like supposedly Mary. We'll just call her the girl with the alabaster box, but I do believe it's Mary. But this woman who poured her lavish love on him, she got to minister to his wounds, which is such a beautiful thing. Michael shared this. Um, I don't know if he shared it at church. I know he shared it at school and he didn't say the name, so I won't say it either, but there's a woman of God that has been just a pillar in the body of Christ. We've known her our whole life. We talk to her all the time. She's been someone that has counseled us through just many things, encouraged us. She is really a mother of the faith, and she is close to going home with the Lord. She's in her 90s now, and she has seen a lot. And when Michael talked to her, she just started talking about Jesus in a way that shook him so much. She said, I have never in my life heard anyone talk about Jesus that way. She was saying things like, I just can't wait to be with him so I can kiss his feet and minister to his wounds and love on Jesus. See, when you're about to take your last breath, you don't care about, I, you don't think I want to go be with Jesus so I can talk about my accomplishments that I did for him on earth. You don't think thoughts like that. All you think about is I can't wait to be with him so I can love on him and minister to his heart. That is what life is all about. And this woman saw more than any of us probably in this room has ever seen. She was a preacher. She saw thousands upon thousands give their life to Jesus. But now at the end of her life, she's saying, I just can't be, I cannot wait to be with him so I can kiss his feet, kiss his wounds, love on my master, because that's what it is all uh, about. We get to partake in the sufferings of Jesus. We have a chance to carry our cross and follow him. See, to carry your cross, you have to lay down your desires. You truly find who you are called to be in Jesus. Can I explain that a little bit deeper? So many people are always, I was one of them, saying, what's God going to do next? I just want God to use me. I just want God to use me. I want to be effective. I want to know what the next day is going to bring, which the, Jesus says, don't even worry about tomorrow. Just <laughs> focus on today. Everyone say amen to that. We have enough issues just to de deal with today. But you won't find that outside of loving Jesus. I promise you that. Only in Jesus do you find who you are really called to be. And we're all called to be Jesus lovers. That is our calling. And in him we find who we are. You f who cares about your identity? Your identity is in Jesus. You find your identity in him. That's you find faith in him. You find confidence, if, you, if that's even a thing you need to be thinking of. But whatever you need to find, you find salvation in him. You find freedom from fear in Jesus. You find 
hope for the hopeless people in the Lord. Everything you need, I promise you, there's one thing you remember me saying today. Please remember, everything you will ever be needing in your life, you will find it only in Jesus. Not from me, not from Michael, not from your favorite YouTube preachers, not, none of that. That's all just an add-on. If you don't find him, you're missing everything. Like I tell our students and I say it to our church family, it would be such a tragedy if you guys came through school or made Jesus image your church and you know more about Michael and me than you do about Jesus. That the Bible's really clear. Um, let me just say this for a moment. This celebrity Christianity has to die. It has to die. It has to be, if our pamphlets are about us more than Jesus, if the things we promote are ourselves more than Jesus, that has to go. It has to go. It has to be about him. The Bible is very clear about that. We are to be like Jesus. Well, Jesus was meek. Jesus was lowly. Jesus was humble. Jesus was a servant. Jesus was all those things. So that's what we need to be, people that look like Jesus, that prefer our brother over ourself, that want Jesus to be magnified and only him like we say all the time, the more ministry I do, the more church I'm around, I realize I really have no clue why God is using us the way that he is. I, I, does that, I hope that makes sense. I'm not like putting myself down. I'm saying I'm, it makes me more in awe of his goodness every day. Every day I walk into the room here, every day I walk into Sunday night and see what the Lord is doing. It makes me go, nothing on my best day, I couldn't do anything this good. On Michael's best day, he couldn't do anything this good. As great as our worship team is, they couldn't do anything this good. It all really is Jesus. It's not us. And, and one day when we're young, so one day when we take our final breath, I'll be able to say, Holy Spirit, you birthed this. You birthed this. This was unto you. This wasn't, this wasn't for any other reason, but you did it, Jesus, and you get all the glory. Because if we birth something, we're going to have to keep doing stuff to sustain it. If the Holy Spirit births something, then he sustains it because it's his work anyways. Much safer place to be. So it has to be all about Jesus. I, I know I sound like a broken record, you guys, but I so want it to be known. I want this, this self-promotion to die in all of us. I mean, I've had it too, so there's no judgment. But anytime I see it creeping up, I have my husband who will lovingly be like, chill out. One time I said, wait, I thought I was preaching at our event. He goes, what do you think you are, Joyce Myers? No. <laughs> That's what he said to me. And I needed it. I so needed it. And I was like, you're right. Forgive me, Lord. I'm just talking to you how, well, you know, I'm just telling you the truth. But there is something in me that was wanting. He goes, why do you have to preach to this event? The Lord, I prayed, and I, don't, I feel like so-and-so is supposed to take this session. And I was like, that's what my heart needed in that moment. Something in me goes, okay, Jess, you were wanting to be seen. You were wanting to be known. You were wanting to be heard. That has to die in me every single day. That's taking up your cross. You have to let that die. You don't live for yourself anymore. You live for Jesus. That is it. And that is what we have to do. All right, I'm going to keep going because I don't think I'm going to get through all of my notes here. He becomes the air you breathe. You don't get caught up in things that don't matter. There is so much distraction right now to get caught up in. Please don't get distracted. Stay focused. Stay focused. My dad has said this to me and Michael since we first started ministry. Someone said it to him when he first started ministry. They said, don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Don't compare yourself to your brother or sister next to you. You have one goal in mind, and that's finishing this race right. Look ahead and be faithful to Jesus. That's, you cannot look around. If you look around, 
I know, it was good advice from my dad, but that always rings in my head, like in how easy it is to get caught up in what this person's doing and what favor this person's walking into and what this one is doing. And then we try to imitate it, but it's not birthed in the spirit. So all it is is an imitation. And then we, we try to say, well, if that's working for this one, I want to do it where we should not even be looking at what our brother and sister are doing. We should only be looking what has God called you to do and be faithful in the assignment that he has called you to. There is protection in that. All right. Jesus is above all. True success is not being known. Loving Jesus is true success. If you get that, you will be successful in everything you do. Your children will change. Your marriage will change. Everything, your relationships with broken family members will change. Everything will change. You find everything you've ever been looking for in Jesus you might think, how can my worship, my love for Jesus change anything? Let's go to Mark 14, 9. Look at what Jesus said about Mary. He said, I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Think of that for a moment. These are Jesus' words, okay? They should carry a lot of weight. Wherever the good news is preached, what she did will be talked about through all the whole earth. So don't tell me loving Jesus is not above all. It's above all. Don't ever limit your love for him. Don't please, don't look at other people that have a platform and say, my love for Jesus isn't as costly as theirs. Or my love for Jesus won't shift things in the nations like theirs does because they have a pulpit. Absolutely not. Your love for Jesus can do more than the most known minister. Your love for Jesus can shake nations. It can shake regions. You loving him and ministering to him. We don't have time to get into ministering to the Lord today, but all throughout the Bible, read Exodus and Ezekiel, and there's so many. I, I read some to the worship team in the back. When you minister to Jesus, things change. Atmospheres change. Regions change. People bound change ministering to the Lord because they're his people anyways. He's going to accomplish what he has planned to accomplish, but you just have to give your love to him. That's all you have to do. That's why when we travel overseas, I've been in some really crazy, crazy, crazy situations growing up with my dad. Lots of really scary things. I remember we would be in one, we were in a terrorist attack one time, a bomb went off, oh, crazy stuff. I could go on and on. I've seen a lot. I remember in those moments, we knew what to do. We're going to just worship Jesus. When people would come, when we went to India, there was people that were throwing rocks at us. There were people that, people were going to the hospital because they were getting rocks thrown at them. Um, it was really scary. I thought my dad was going to die a martyr's death. I remember asking Michael, will he feel it if he dies today? Because it was that kind of situation. We knew what to do. We worshiped Jesus. That was the only thing. We, we didn't know what else to do but worship him, and he took care of everything. When my mom got that diagnosis, I could have let fear come in or I could have gone to Jesus and just loved him because he takes care of everything. So that's what ministering to the Lord is. It means no matter, it means so many things, but it means when, no matter your circumstance, no matter what you're facing, no matter what your heart is feeling and going through, when you go and minister to the Lord and give him all you have, he will meet your every need. He is a faithful friend. He is a loving father. He loves you more than you will ever, ever understand. I promise you that. Just love Jesus. Never downplay your lavish worship for the Lord. We should all live lavishly, and our heart should always be to minister to the feelings of Jesus. If you preach the good news, but you don't burn for first love for Jesus, you are missing the entire reason that you're even preaching. If you care more about the person than the one that we speak about, you are in ministry for the wrong reasons. I remember at a crusade, I saw thousands one crusade I went to come down to the altar. I remember Steve Brock, you old timers would know Steve Brock, he used to sing opera pretty much for my dad on the crusade stage, wonderful man of God. And I remember he grabbed Michael and I when we were on the side of the stage when we, when we used to work for my dad and he whispered to us and he said, 
If you forget about the one, God won't trust you with the masses. And that's something that always stuck about it. He goes, we preach the gospel for the one. And that's why the Lord will trust you with more. So that's why we minister to the Lord. That's why we love him. That's why we preach. That's why we even get into ministry because it's so costly. That's, I can preach a whole sermon of the cost of just following Jesus and being in ministry and all those things. It, it's so costly, but it's so rewarding at the same time because there is nothing like loving Jesus. I say that now that I went through so many years. You guys know my story, many of you. I went through so many years of not knowing Jesus. Joel, can you help me out, buddy? Not knowing Jesus, and then I finally found him. And I'm here to tell you as well, you cannot know him through somebody else's experience. You cannot know him through your parents' experience. You cannot know him through your spouse's experience. My children cannot know Jesus off of mommy and daddy's experience. They have to find Jesus for their own. They have to know him because that's when your life is truly transformed. You cannot know him off of somebody else's encounter. And I want to say something else. We need a fresh encounter every single day. There's many of us who are living off of old encounters. We're talking about what God did five years ago, a year ago, six years ago. And the Lord is wanting to encounter his people again. He wants to touch your heart. He wants to be loved by you. He loves you so, so much. He's so near. He's so loving. I remember, not I remember, it just happened. I always say, I remember. The other day, I was, dry, I was flying. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm tired. We traveled a little too much recently. I was flying on the plane recently, and Michael ministered in Las Vegas, and we took our son, Benny, with us. And I was overlooking the clouds, and I could see the sun setting in the distance. It was beautiful. And I was listening to um, C.C. Winans sing, Jesus, You're Beautiful to Me. You know that old song. And man, just hearing his name, I started crying on the plane. And the stewardess walked over, and I was like, I'm okay. <laughs> it's all good. But I couldn't just the mention of his name, just hearing C.C. sing about Jesus, it just did something to me. And nobody does that but Jesus. No other name. I love my kids. I love Michael. But when I hear their name, it doesn't do to me what Jesus' name does. There's only his name that moves my heart in such a beautiful way. When we were in Nashville, we were with Steph, and it was Michael, and, and um, Cece was with my dad um, just hanging out. They're old friends, and she's coming soon to church. We're trying to work that out because that will just be amazing. Um, and so Michael put on that song, that Jesus, you're beautiful to me. And it went from me and Steph and Michael just casually talking and laughing and just hanging out to instantly in the room. As soon as we put that on and turned our affection to Jesus, we were all crying. We were all just worshiping the Lord. And just he just makes things different. He takes the most vacant place and he puts his love in there. And he just makes everything new and he makes everything change and he's just so wonderful. I don't know how else to say it. He's so beautiful and so merciful and so tender-hearted when you need someone to show you compassion and love. He's always there to show you love and mercy. His mercy is new every day. I'm sorry. Here I am crying again talking about Jesus, but man, if, I, if you're going to cry over anything, shouldn't it be about Jesus? Who else moves your heart like that? Who else has given you chance time and time and time again? Who has loved you unconditionally like Jesus? Not even your family always loves you unconditionally. Not your closest friends. They don't love you unconditionally all the time. But Jesus always does. That's why I love these passages when you read about his mercy to this woman, this sinner who had sinned so much, who was an outcast in society. Jesus welcomed her with open arms. He is so worthy to be loved. Loving Jesus is life's greatest calling. 
I will say that again. Loving Jesus is the greatest calling you can ever be invited into for the rest of your life, for your whole life. I pray that all of you are more in love with Jesus when you end your life than when you first began because, began because we all start hungry. We all start in love when you get saved, if you're zealous, you're excited, it's so exciting. And then life happens and so easily sometimes our affection and attention can be pulled a different direction. But you're, if you're in love, you will stay burning for Jesus. I promise you that. Just like a marriage, we are married to Jesus. If you fall out of love with your spouse, which you shouldn't, but if you do, you are more likely to turn away. You are more likely to cheat. You are more likely to go another direction. But when you stay in love, you won't do those things. Do you know what I mean? Just practical talk. When you stay in love, when, when you open your heart and don't close your heart off to Jesus, you'll stay burning and in first love for Jesus. When I came back to the Lord, it was after I went to Columbia. I have family took me in, an amazing family took me in. I was broken. I had just got thrown out of Christian University. I was at rock bottom. And this amazing man of God who was taping with my dad, Cesar Castellano, I've talked about this before, took me in with his wife and his children, and I went to Columbia with them when they were having their conference. I hadn't been to church in years. I, it's been years. I had been completely away from Jesus. I mean, I could make my testimony sound as crazy as Todd White, so we won't go there. It was bad. Just trust me. I did everything you could even imagine and I hadn't been to church for so long, and I missed him, but I was so hard inside that I didn't want to let him love me, nor did I want to love him anymore. And I remember when I went, I would hear these people talk about Jesus. And at first, I just thought, I don't want this. I don't even want any part of it. And the more I would hear them talk about the Lord, the more my heart would start to break down and soften. And I remember a man came. It was a workshop. It wasn't even one of the main sessions. And again, it was in Colombia. Everything was in Spanish. I thought I was Spanish back then, so I liked it. But I could actually understand a lot of Spanish. All my friends here were Hispanic growing up. And so I could understand some of it, but not fully. And I remember he, I had my translator in my ear, and he was just talking about first love for Jesus. And I remember, it's so amazing to me that now that's what our whole ministry is really about. And this was the message that changed, changed my heart. I was 20 at the time. And he was just talking about, remember when you used to be in love with Jesus? Remember when he was your everything? Remember how tender-hearted you used to be and you just loved Jesus with everything in you? And I remember sitting there thinking, yes, I was so tender as a child. My dad teases me all the time because I cried at Bambi. My parents had to literally lift me out over their shoulders and take me out of the theater because Bambi's mom, you know what happened? And it was too much for my little tender heart to handle. And so that I was, I was a very sensitive child and got so hard along the way because I fell out of love with Jesus and I pushed him out of my life. And then all the junk was able to get in. And so when this guy was talking about first love again, everything in my heart was like, that was me. That was me. I loved him like that. I was so sensitive to the Holy Spirit as a child. I, I used to sing and dance and worship and love Jesus with everything in my heart. But life happened and I I turned away. And then that moment, I remember I started crying, just sitting there. And I said, Lord, I want to give you everything again. I want to give you my whole heart again. And that is what I desire for the rest of my life. I don't have accomplishments that I hope that I achieve one day. I don't, I don't, me and Michael never talk about how big we hope Jesus Image Church becomes or how big we hope our events become and how big we want our school to be. We don't ever think like that. Our goal is one thing, loving Jesus and loving him with everything we have. 
That's our goal for our students. As much as I want them to do wonderful things, and they will for the Lord, more than winning thousands to Jesus, I want them to burn with first love for the rest of their life. I want to see them. And you church members, I want to see you in 30 years, 40 years. I want you to be more in love with Jesus then than you are today. That is my prayer for you. That's my prayer for my children. That's the prayer that I have for me, is always stay in love. If, I, if I've accomplished that, I feel like I have accomplished what I was put on this earth to accomplish. Loving Jesus, loving him above all, ministering to his heart, being available to him. That means if he tells you to go to some nation, Keith, I love you so much because I know you go into probably the most broken places all alone carrying your cross and you do that unto the Lord. I know you because we've talked about this. That means if you, you have a call of God like Keith or you're called to be a missionary or you're called to tell the people that you work with in your business about Jesus, you do whatever it is he's called you to do. If you're a worshiper, you write songs about Jesus, you worship unto him. If you preach, you preach to Jesus. That's what it means, giving him your everything. Thank you, Jesus. Just give me five more minutes. I just wanted to get to this. Again, Bethany happened right before Judas betrayed him. We read that in Mark 14, 10. Jesus knew his creation and one of his closest friends would forsake him at the cross. The anointing at Bethany happened right before all of his disciples would desert him. It happened right before the cross. In that moment, Jesus was longing to be loved deeply because he was about to suffer deeply. Just think of what that woman with the alabaster box did to the heart of the Lord. Just think about that for a moment. Everybody else pretty much was about to forsake him at his darkest moment. But think about what this love, there was a reason that he went to Bethany. There was a reason that he said to Martha, where is Mary? There is a reason that Jesus went to those places. There is a reason that he at times uses the least and the most unqualified. Why is that? Because he doesn't care about your qualification. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at what you're willing to give him. He's looking at your deep love for him. That's what matters to Jesus. He's not looking for the qualified. He doesn't care how well you speak or how amazing you can quote your sermon. Now I'm seeing people train people how to preach the gospel. They give seminars about it. What about the Holy Spirit? What happened to that? What happened to the Holy Spirit teaching us what to do? You can't train someone how to preach the gospel. The Holy Spirit trains us how to preach the gospel. You have to point people to Jesus. That will train them. That will raise them up. That and again, no knocking on if you do that. I just don't understand. Where's the Lord in this? Where's the Holy Spirit? He's the one that makes the unqualified qualified, not learning how to talk. I tease myself all the time as my students tease us. I can't even say most words properly. I'm not qualified. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a qualified person preacher. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know that I love Jesus. Do you understand? All I know is I love him with everything in me. I love his word. I read the Bible every single day. I don't take this lightly. I, I got up this morning early to pray and read and be with the Lord because I didn't want to just come out here and not give you something because I don't depend on my qualifications because I'm not that good. I just love Jesus with all of my heart. I want my, my prayer is that you will love him too with everything you have. And if you, you know what, can we just stand real quick? That if you've turned away from him, if you have neglected this, this invitation of first love, I want today to be the day where we make it all about Jesus again. Can we just pray for a moment? Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we just welcome you right now. We welcome you. Holy Spirit, move on the hearts of your people, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are revealing first love to us all over again, Jesus. Yeah, I want to take this time. I want to invite you down to the altar. If you've never given your life to Jesus, if you've never even known Jesus before, or if you have fallen out of love with Jesus and he is not 
become, he has not been your all in all. He is not your number one anymore. I want to invite you to come down to the altar right now and recommit your life to Jesus. Come on, if you feel like that's you, come down here. If you're watching online and you want to commit yourself to Jesus, I want to invite you right now down to the altar. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. If there's anybody in here that says, Jess, that's me, I have fallen out of first love with Jesus, I want to give him my all. I want to invite you. That's beautiful. Thank you. I want to give my all to Jesus. Thank you. That's beautiful. I want to invite you down to the altar. If your heart is not burning like it used to, if it's not burning for first love for Jesus, I want to invite you down to the altar. Yeah, you might even be a Jesus school student. You might have been in church your entire life, but if you're saying, Jess, that's me, I'm not going after Jesus like I used to do. There's still time. I want to invite you down to the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to begin praying, but like Michael always says, you won't interrupt us if you want to come down to the altar. So you have to make a bold step of faith. You have to. That, that's the first step. If you won't declare him in a group like this, you'll be embarrassed to declare him anywhere else. These are, we're family. We're a church family. So that's why I honor you guys who came down here and gave your yes to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's pray, church. Repeat after me, dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask you, Lord, to forgive my sins. Jesus, forgive me for not loving you with my whole heart. We believe that you, come on church, say it with us, that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross, that you rose again on the third day, that you defeated death, and you rose to live forever. We give you our life, Lord Jesus. We promise to follow you all the days of our life. Forgive us of our sins. We thank you, Jesus that you wash us with your precious blood. We thank you, Jesus, for the cross. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to give us power to walk out this Christian life every single day. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is a good day because now you guys are going to go home and you're going to be with Jesus. And he changes us in the most beautiful way. He gives us a sensitive heart when we had a cold and stony heart. He's just so beautiful. And I'm so proud of all of you. I'm quickly if this is your first time giving your heart to Jesus, we have a new believers booth outside. Dion is right behind you. Dion, just come right here so they can see you. We want to help you walk out this Christian life. This is not for us to bother you or make you a member of the church. This is to help and equip you. If you need a Bible, we have a Bible for you. Also, we are going to do baptism soon, so I highly encourage you to get baptized Read your Bible every single day. I cannot stress that enough. The Bible said it is daily bread, just like the manna came down from heaven. Remember, it came down every day. It wasn't good after the next day. We need to have Jesus. We need to read of his word every single day. It is daily bread. It is needed in your life more than food. You, that is the foundation of everything. If you read your Bible, if you pray, if you spend time with Jesus, you will be victorious in this Christian life. I promise you that. That is the key. That is the key. Be with Jesus every single day. Do not let your head go to sleep that night if you have not been with Jesus. Give him your time every single day. And now as a church, we're going to just pray over them. And I just want to pray a blessing over you that the Holy Spirit would just baptize us with his power. 
Lord, we just thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for these people, Lord. Lord, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you will just come upon them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for equipping them, Lord. Oh, for helping them. We're so thankful that you are our comforter and our helper, Lord. So right now, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you will baptize them with power. In Jesus' name, Lord, seal everything that was done today. Come on, agree, church. Seal everything that was done today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for the power of the cross. We thank you, Father, for boldness. I just feel like boldness is going to come upon on many of you. Boldness of the of the spirit is going to become, you're not going to be shy. I don't know, maybe it's this girl I'm praying for, but you're not going to be shy and timid. The Lord is going to give you strength to proclaim Jesus, even to your family. To, I'm speaking to you, even your family, you're going to proclaim Jesus and be unashamed of the gospel. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross. Seal it in Jesus' name. We love you. We worship you. We praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Love you. Um, our prayer team, if you need prayer for anything, I'm going to invite our prayer team now to come up. Um, I would not miss tonight. It's we, I know we always say that. It's always good, but tonight's going to be really powerful. And again, um, please put the new address up for uh, next Sunday morning. We won't be here Sunday morning only, but we will be back here the following Sunday. Love you guys so much. demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the Son of God who he said he was. Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip. And with ten thousands upon ten thousands, he will return in glory. In 2017, we received a word from Lou Engel that we really believe is the word of the Lord for our school, our house, and the entire ministry. Lou said that the greatest musicians in the world and the greatest vocalists in the world, the greatest worshipers, that they would descend upon Orlando, Florida to Jesus' image. And that word began to burn in us and we began to dream about what it would look like to one day have a school where people would come to worship Jesus and be in his presence and receive his word. And a church was birthed in that same worshiping atmosphere. And what a beautiful opportunity that we have as a Jesus people to come before him and to be at his feet and to pour ourselves out before him. Worship has the potential to unlock things that really nothing else in the world can unlock. And so we decided about a year ago to launch a, an opportunity within the Jesus School setting for those worshipers, for the musicians, for the singers, for the dancers, for the artists, for the poets. And this is going to be a place 
where you can come and you can learn and you can grow. And we have highly trained instructors who are gonna be coming. They're gonna be teaching instruments. They're gonna be teaching vocals. Anything that you can think of with worship, it's going to be there. The worship is not about us. We worship for Him. So we wanna invite you to come. Come worship the King of Kings with us. So come and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Come and surrender yourself to the Lord. And let's be ones that are willing to rise and go. And we decided to name it after Bethany. That wonderful house where Jesus was ministered to. That place where the feelings of Jesus were preeminent. It was a place where he desired to not only move and work and teach and do wonderful things, but a place where he would be adored, a place where he would rest, a place where he would run to so that he would receive ministry. And so now Jesus School has this space that's been created for all of you who are desiring to use your vocal gifts, your instrumental gifts, your gifts of worship, your dancing gifts, and give them to Jesus. If Jesus would make this a Bethany, would he make our lives a Bethany where he'd come and rest and recline among us? You were created to experience the presence of God in a way that will transform your life, family, and the world. We understand how difficult it can be to find time to attend a school where you study the Word of God, grow in your faith, and build a community of believers. And that's why we created Jesus School Online. We believe that the Holy Spirit is unlimited in His reach. No matter where you live or what stage of life you're in, we invite you to take part in this amazing online opportunity. You'll be led by world-renowned speakers and worship leaders. You will be taught to seek Jesus daily, be activated in the power of the Holy Spirit, learn to share the gospel, and build community with Jesus people from around the world. At Jesus School Online, we are passionate about seeing a Jesus people raised up to shake the nations for the glory of God. You were created for this moment in history. The Jesus people are emerging and we have one ambition. Jesus himself. Will you join us?